Find the distance between the lines R1, 1, 2, 0 and lambda 1, 1, minus 1 and R2, 0, 3, 1 plus mu 2, minus 1, 3. These lines are what's known as skew lines. Let's see what we mean by that. If we just go over to a GeoGebra app and if we have a look here, we have the x-axis here the y-axis here and the z-axis here. Later in this, re this video we'll look at it in 3D using the 3D glasses. But if I move this around a little bit you can see that these lines be impossible to make a plane which contains both these lines. And neither of the lines are parallel and they do not intersect. Therefore they're known as skew lines. Okay, and what we're going to try to do is to find, try to find the shortest distance between this line and this line here using what's known as scalar projection. But before we do that we need to understand a little bit about scalar projection. So one method to find the shortest distance is to use what's known as scalar projection of one vector A onto another vector B. So here I have a point A and a, a, a vector going away from it. Here another, I have another vector going to B. And here I have the vector A. And here I have the vector B. If I draw this line down here so that this is perpendicular to this, then using a bit of trigonometry, we've got A, N. This bit here is called the scalar projection of A onto B. It can be thought of as the shadow of the vector A onto the vector B. If we use the, uh, so this length here will be the magnitude of A cos theta using a little bit of trigonometry. Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse and therefore if we rearrange it uh, the adjacent side will be the hypotenuse times cos theta the length of this vector here, A, is the magnitude of A. Using the scalar product, we know that A dot B is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cos of the angle between them. And therefore, if we rearrange this so that we take the magnitude of A over to here, we're going to get, sorry, the magnitude of B over here, sorry, the magnitude of B over to here, we're going to get that magnitude of A cos theta, i.e. the length of the scalar projection, will be A dot, A dot B, vector A dot B divided by the magnitude of B. And this is called the scalar projection of A onto B. So our two lines are R1 is 1, 2, 0, that's our point, lambda 1, 1 minus 1 and R2 which is 0, 3, 1, 2 minus 1, 3. So this is my point. So I can find a vector joining the two points by doing AB is equal to AO plus OB, so it's negative that one, plus that one, plus, and that gives me minus 1, 1 and 1. So on my diagram now, uh, if I, if I click on this, I get the two points A and B. These are the two directional vectors of the line, so say that these are taken from these. And then if I click on here, I get the uh, vector joining both of those two points. This vector here, which I just calculated, and I've got here minus 1, 1, 1. Right. Now what I need to do is find a vector which is uh, perpendicular to the line. I'm going to click this. Perpendicular to the line. So this vector here is actually perpendicular to the line. line it's going to be perpendicular to line 1. And this angle here is my theta in, in my uh, 
triangle which I just drawn on in the other part of my diagram. Okay, and this is my perpendicular drop down, which is 90 degrees to vector B. All right, so the orange vector is vector B is perpendicular to the line one here. Okay, so just look at that from different angles, just so that we can see. Okay, and right, and later we'll look at it in 3D. Okay, so the distance between the two lines will be from this point to this point here. Now it doesn't look like it, but we'll look at it when we'll look at it in 3D at the end. So going back to this, to find that perpendicular, that vector B, that's vector A, we need to take the directional vectors of each of the lines and find their vector product or cross product. So we know how to do that. We put this in the form i, j, k. We write down the first one, which is 1, 1, minus 1. We write down the second one, 2, minus 1, and 3. And then we cover up this one and then find the determinant of what's left. So it would be 1 times 3 minus minus 1 times minus 1, lots of i. Next one always minus. We cover up j, we do 1 times 3, 1 times 3, minus 1 times 2. Next one, last one's plus, and the last one we do, we cover up this, we do 1 times minus 1, minus 1 times 2. Be very careful with the signs, okay? So that comes down to be 3 minus 1, minus 1 is 1, times minus 1 is 1, lots of i. Minus 3 plus 2, so it's 1 times 3, minus minus 1 times 2 is plus 2, lots of j, and then minus 1 minus 2, lots of k. So we get here 2i minus 5j minus 3k. Now we, we will call that back to b, but... Um, we, in the, for the sake of our diagram, we're going to take the opposite one. So we're going to take minus 2 plus 5 plus 3. So we're just going to change the sign. It doesn't matter. It's still perpendicular. It's just going in the opposite direction. And that will tally up with our diagram. You don't necessarily have to do this bit in order to find the shortest distance. So, this here gives me... this vector here, which is perpendicular to uh, the line A. Okay, if we look round, I don't know if we can see, that will actually give me, if we look from that angle, you can see that that distance here, the shortest distance from here to here, from here to here, so from here to here will give me the shortest distance between these two skew lines. If you look at it that way, maybe that will help you see it. Okay, so that you can see that gives me the shortest distance between these two lines. Even though the line's here, if we just move it over here a bit, this will represent the shortest distance. Okay. So, the shortest distance between L1 and L2 is given by the scalar projection of A onto B which is like that, where this is a 1, minus 1, 1, 1, this is b, 2, 5, 3, don't forget this is all of b, this is the bit that we want, and the distance is given by a dot b over the magnitude of b, so doing the scalar product we do minus 1 times minus 2, plus 1 times 5, plus 1 times 3 over the magnitude of this one, so it's going to be minus 2 squared plus 5 squared plus 3 squared. This gives me 10 on the top, and this gives me 4 plus 25, 29 plus 9, which is 38. So we're going to get 10 over root 38, multiplying the top and bottom by root 38, root 38. So that's going to give me 10 over 38, which cancels down to 5 over 19 times root 38, which is approximately equal to 1.62. So, if we click on here, we'll see that distance here. We can see this shape, this uh, dash distance here represents the distance between two lines. And like I say, if you put the, so it looks like that, you'll see that that actually represents the shortest distance between those two lines. 
Now, if you were to use 3D glasses, okay, so you need to put on, for the rest of the video, you now need to put on your red cyan glasses. So in uh, GeoGebra, if you do uh, right click and graphics view, graphics, and do projection, and go to glasses and select the glasses, and then it's better at grayscale, or you can do it in color if you want to, and press OK, you will now get to see it all in three dimensions. So let's just take this all off so we can just see what we did there. Let's take it all off. Okay, so then we've just got the two lines. So if we click there, we now get the two points. So we get that point and that point. So I can't really, those two points, I hopefully you can see that. If we click here, this just gives me the directional vectors of the of the two lines. If we click the vec, this one here, we get the vector joining A and V, and that's called vector A. Okay, if we click this one here, we get what's known as the uh, vector product of the directional vectors v1 and v2 could we could have it going the other way but it just looks better if it goes this way for the diagram so this is vector b here okay notice it, it is drawn from a and this bit here is 90 degrees okay and we drop down the perpendicular here and we can also see that that is 90 degrees with the vector b as well the perpendicular and if we click here, all right, the actual distance is this stripe a bit here, and that gives me 1.62 or 5 root 38 over 19. If we move it around, we can really see what we're talking about here. If I move it like that, you can definitely see that that distance there is the shortest distance rep represented by that. Okay, just notice when we've got two skew lines like that, it's not possible to make a plane between the two two lines okay they don't form a plane okay so it's quite a difficult concept but with the 3d glasses 3d effect I think you can very easily see that that it gives you the shortest distance between the two lines this is called the scalar projection of this vector here on to this vector here okay scalar projection of that vector onto that vector gives you the shortest distance between the two lines. Okay, so it's quite a difficult concept, but with a bit of visualization you can see it's work. So all you do is find a vector joining the two points, which is very easy to do because you're always given two points in a line, there's one, there's the other. You find the cross product of the directional vectors, okay, and then do the scalar product and the divide by the magnitude of the cross product. Okay, so I hope that helps you understand the distance between two skew lines. Sorry about a long video and I hope you've enjoyed this.